All right, back here for my final college series study ball, J.J. McCarthy, part two. So we watched him against Purdue, kind of his biggest game, over 300 yards, over 30 pass attempts. Hard to find that throughout the rest of the season, but as I was going through tape, wanted to try to find another tape that, uh, that showed kind of the big picture of who he is. So I jumped at the Maryland tape after watching uh, them play that game. And so we're going to jump into that today, and we're going to continue to look at the things that we saw in, uh, in game number one. His poise in the pocket, his ability to attack down the field, the big throws down the field, good decision making, and then we wanna to continue to check the accuracy. Was the accuracy just about that one game, right? It was the one game that he threw a whole bunch, so we saw some accuracy issues. Do those things show up, those same sorts of things, good, and the question marks, do they show up in each and every team that we watch? Decisiveness. One thing that we saw last game, see it again right here. Come out, know you've got the corner off, got a hitch right here, no hesitation. Get back, see it, rip it. Boom. Another one. Coming back with the double seams. Seam, seam, looking for that one high. Going to read that safety, work that safety. Comes back, safety stays in the middle. Bang. Ball's out, great throw, right on the money. And again, no hesitation down the field. All right, late here. Missed one right here as he comes off to play action. You've got the post, the over, and then basically the flat here. So we we'll always want to come out on the play action and just check the nearest safety to the post. Who can take the post away? So it's that one safety back there, right there. Get him to hesitate. Once you get him to hesitate, take your post up over the top. All right? That's okay. We're all going to miss some. Okay, so he misses that. Trying to go to the over right here. It's really tough, right? Lots of bodies in there. Now just be careful late going to the flat. Almost intercepted right here. Haven't seen a lot of bad decisions by him, but he misses the post. Tries to force this late. Almost leads to an interception. Okay, so careful again here. All right, so we've got the POCO concept. So it's post, corner, out, flat, and then the in on the backside, okay? So I like to work to the in on the backside with this uh, just because you're gonna see right here as we play this out, they really got guys in position. Corner sitting there waiting for the corner, a safety here for the post. They've got a guy that's grabbing the flat right here, so I kind of like to work that high-low off the backside and really feel that safety. Now, they're running this post from a little tighter alignment, but JJ, again, throwing this a little bit late. You want that post, maybe drive it in there on the front side, but you got to know what's going on on the backside when you try to drive this in. Throws it late. Now, his receiver does a nice job of cutting underneath this, but that late throw almost intercepted once again. Tough concept, looking to the front side. A lot of teams will read, try to read that high-low front side off the corner, the rolled corner. I like to go back side because to me it's just cleaner. Okay, so. Look right here. Now, not sure he peaks this side first. So possible influence right there to that end back behind it. He's got some throws there, but decides to go to his one-on-one -on, -one on the back side. His feet get a little bit away from him because he's looking left. And so, see his feet kind of going this way as he's trying to throw the ball over here. Usually going to leave that ball out in front like he does there. But trying to go to the one-on-one, -on -one, looked like he got a little pull by the defender there. Maybe that caused the errant throw. Usually really good at setting up his feet. That time his feet were a little bit off because he looked left, tried to go back to the right. All right, hard to tell in the shadows right here, but he picks his one-on-one. -on -one. It basically goes across the board, picks his one-on-one. -on -one. Going to try to throw that back shoulder throw again. Decent ball right there, trying to give his guy a chance. We just know, right, you throw the go route, you throw the big throws down the field, you're going to miss some of them. 
Be less accurate down the field than you are with the short throws. You only expect him to make every single one. Okay, like this. This is that 12 yard semi route from the backside half, so you got to have a little bit of mustard on it. Really good throw. Boom, right on the money, gets it out there. It's a long throw from the backside hash. Money. Rather see him hit this with no hitch. Just get back, don't hitch it, just get it out there. But again, I like the definitive, hey, I got the corner off. I'm going to make the game easy and just pop it out there to my hitch. Put it on him right now. Always like to see guys that do that, that recognize stuff pre-snap, understand how to make the game easier, and get the ball into the hands of their playmakers. All right, nice throw here. Nice route on the outside. He's going to push down, throw the defender by, and run the corner route. Like this, nice little step up. Okay, so again, I want you to notice, Bo Nix was last week, and we talked a lot about his technique and how he never attack the throw. His body never went towards the throw. Watch J.J. McCarthy right here, right? See how his body is going and attacking forward, attacking the throw, able to get the power behind it. That's so key at being able to get the velocity and the pace you want on the football. It's using that back foot to drive you towards your target. Okay, so another quick throw opportunity to the outside. Rushes it a little bit, throws it a little bit hard and we get an incompletion. So that same idea of the pacing of the football shows up again here, leading to some inaccuracies when he wants to just throw everything so hard instead of just a little bit quicker getting it out, a little bit more pace on it. Another really, really good throw, right? So when you have throws like this, so the last throw's got corner off, lay that football out there, let your guy go get it. These tight man-to-man -man coverage, boom, you gotta get it out, nice throw. Put a little mustard on it, bang, you don't have a lot of room for air. No question that that's something that he can definitely do. Now we just need to see the change up. So you have the ability to take something off of it. Okay, I can live with this read right here, so it's basically all go again, go. Thought maybe got a shot right here as this guy runs through the safety, goes there, maybe a shot there, but no problem coming underneath everybody carries right everybody carries okay so yeah you could take that shot maybe set it up over here but everybody carries absolutely nothing wrong with just dumping it underneath to your guy letting him go make a play for you uh, tough one right here lots of bodies only rushing three so they're running the corner, under, under, right? There's bodies here, bodies there. And then they got the end coming back behind it. So maybe you peek front side. If you're ready and have patience, maybe there's a shot right there back behind, but you got to be ready down here in the red zone. Look like he already worked through that and is trying to come back to this end. Maybe a shot at the end if you can throw it up and over the top. But a lot of bodies back there. Now it's go create. Okay, really good at making decisions for the most part. As with any quarterback, when things break down, when you got to get through your process, when you got to go create, now you usually put the ball in harm's way more often. So we kind of see that. When he's been able to stay on pace, stay on schedule, he's been really, really good with his decision making. When he's got off schedule a little bit, that's where things have gotten a little bit more dangerous with the football, trying to jam things in. Okay, talking about jamming things in. Okay, so they've got a little route right here. Seam, go, so kind of all go once again. I like his decision to go inside. You get the safety to go outside, right? Always got to peek and know what's happening on the backside, but this needs to be a touch throw. Okay, the difference here, he tries to jam it in there. Boom, jams it in there, and the linebacker is able to take it away. Love to see this guy hint and stay up a little higher away from the backside guy, but this ball has to be up to the back line where my guy can get it or nobody can get it. Ah, tries to force it. Throws a little too low, a little too hard, INT. There's 
Another one. Get back, rip it. Get back, rip it. We've seen he's really, really good at that. When you see something pre-snap, no hesitation to get it out of there. Nice. I like it. I like it. Feels the pressure. Steps up. Right? A lot of these other guys are going to step up and then they're going to take off right now and go try to create. He's done a nice job understanding that's not a big part of his game, kind of like Michael Penix. Going to step up. I'm going to settle back in and keep my eyes down the field. Looking for this over. This guy drops underneath it. Come back down. Nice process. While under a little bit of duress. I like it. Really good job. Like his pocket presence. Ah, I don't know if this was a miscommunication here. I don't know. I kind of like the angle that this guy's coming out. He comes out a little bit flatter here with the guy going up over the top of him. I don't know if JJ expects him to go higher. It looks like this guy's trying to go to the pylon, so this guy should be a little bit flatter here. Uh, but I'm not sure what causes this miss. Who he's throwing this to exactly. But would love to see on this one again, the touch. Just lay it out there, right? There's all kinds of space there. Just lay it to your guy and let him go get it. One thing that he's definitely going to have to improve on as he goes to the next level, right? Here's even another one. Got the inside fade here. And it's not a bad throw, right? His receiver's got a chance for it, but there's no adjustment that's going to happen. He's throwing this again 100 miles an hour. Get back, lay it up, lay it up. Let your guy go and adjust to it. Hold off the DB and go make the catch instead of a 100 mile an hour throw again on a 25 yard inside fade. Okay, good patience here. Not sure what they're trying to do here. So they got a hitch and a hook and then this guy starts out and then returns back inside. So he goes underneath uh, this middle hook here. So JJ comes out and looks like he wants to throw it right there. Now this guy pops out, so I like that he pulls it down. This is probably the throw right here. Um, but again, not sure how they're reading it or what exactly they're doing, but this guy returns back underneath it. So good patience to kind of stick it in between those bodies right there. Okay, another nice read. Got the all go. So we see a lot of these same concepts. Could have maybe read the two on one to the outside here, but getting everybody to carry once again, not forcing the ball down the field. Just making the play in front of you. Boom. Nice job. Good accurate throw. All right, so we've got a hot situation right here. Now, they bring, actually looks like the corner here, but we really need to have some sort of hot out this front side. Now, maybe the back's supposed to pick this up here. Uh, do we have some sort of hot throw to the front side? Doesn't really see it here until it's too late, but you see the back coming over. Maybe he's supposed to pick that up. Just like to have those guys aware of what their hot situations are, the guys coming front side what their answers are, not nearly as prevalent in college. I shouldn't even say that. It's not as prevalent in the pros even as, as much as I would like it to be, but I want all these young guys to have a plan, understand protections. Another nice job here, coming back. It's really just an all-go concept. We really have nothing here. We're running into safeties across the board. Don't have to launch it, force it down the field, just dump it off. So he does a really nice job of not just forcing big throws. Some of these other guys pushing the ball down the field, pushing the ball down the field when it's there, when it's not there, trying to make the big play. I think JJ does a nice job of balancing that out on when to make the big play and when to go ahead and check it down. Okay, so here's another one. Nice read. We get this double move post right here. Now just lay it out. Lay it out. It's wide open. It's easy. Ah. We miss it. Come back here and again, just a little hard and a little flat, right? See, there's no adjustment that can be made by the receiver. Just lay it out and we got ourselves an easy touchdown. 
So that same thing continues to show up no matter what the throw is, is being able to take something off the football. Okay, nice read right here. It's kind of that same concept we saw the last game. This guy over here, this guy hooking, this guy running a read shallow route. Good job working through it, keeping the ball out in front of him. Drops the football again because he stops when JJ, I think, expects him to keep going. I've seen that a few times. Not going to put all those on JJ, so I just gave him love for not forcing the football down the field. Now here's one. He gets a little bit of pressure, throws him off a little bit timing-wise, tries to jam this in here. Again, not really sure what his receiver's doing. We don't want to go and bend it in here when we've got a middle safety. But this guy ends up carrying. This is one you'd love to see him dump it down to the back again. When he's trying to force it right there, almost an interception. So not nearly the number of throws that we saw in the Purdue game. You can't really find a game where he's got a whole bunch of throws. So just had to, to pick one. But I thought this was representative again of who he is as a player. Uh, definitive when he's on schedule and on time he can make every throw he can push the ball down the field he can make big throws good decision maker when he's not being rushed a uh, little playmaking in there as well the accuracy issues are something that continually show up and more than anything it's the pace can you change the pace of the ball does every ball have to be thrown exactly the same way because if they are then you have to be perfect with your throws Throwing it 100 miles an hour behind a guy is going to lead to more incompletions than throwing it with nice pace behind a guy where he can turn, adjust, and make the catches. So uh, that's the one thing that jumped out to me more than anything else with J.J. McCarthy is just the up and down accuracy that he has. Plenty of arm strength, but having the ability to take some of that power away uh, when those opportunities are in front of him, when there's space out there to allow his guys on the other end to do their job for him. Really good pocket presence, really good poise in the pocket. So you see, he looks like an NFL quarterback by the way he plays inside the pocket. He's just going to have to be more consistent with his accuracy if he's gonna be a really good player at the next level.